Hi, I'm Gail Kroll from the New Cumberland First Church of God. We're glad that you joined us today for worship. I want to quickly call attention to the information in the description area of this YouTube video. You can find general information about our church and information about this specific worship service. If you would like to have a chance to chat with members of our church family, you are encouraged to join us on Sunday mornings at 1045 a.m. on our online church platform. The website for that is ncfcog.online.church. Other links in the video description include a link to our church website, links to our Facebook pages, and a link to our digital bulletin. And as usual, we truly appreciate any contributions that are made via our giving link. Any amount, large or small, can make a difference as we do our best to serve our church family and our community. Thanks again for joining us today. Our worship service will begin right after this video. Good morning, and welcome to the First Church of God, New Cumberland. My name is Becky. It's good to see everyone here today. I was really happy that it wasn't raining this morning. God did me a favor and watered all my plants and flowers and stopped the rain before I got up, and it's going to be a glorious day, so thank you, Jesus. We're going to begin. We want to get our eyes focused, our hearts, our minds, everything we have focused on Jesus. Thank you. 
Let's pray. Jesus, as we sing our songs of praise to you, we ask that you help us to let go of the chains that are binding us. We want to trust you, Jesus, with everything that we are, to hold nothing back as we surrender to you. We want to obey you completely and stand on the promise of John 8:12 that says, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads you to life. Jesus, we praise you for the promise of life through you, helping us to shine your light through the world. Amen. You may be seated. I'm going to need a moment before we start the message, so why don't we pray? Oh, Lord. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for how you speak through music and people and um, even just situations that don't have voices, Lord. You're there in it. You're, you're working in it. You are amazing, God. And help us as your people understand the message you have today. Help us apply it to our lives, Lord. And if there are any lies or schemes of the devil in this room, I pray against them in the name of Jesus. They can leave out the windows that don't have space because our God can kick them out. In Jesus' name, amen. So many, many weeks ago, God gave me this scripture, and we're going to go from this scripture in the beginning, and we're going to come back to it at the end, but roll up your sleeves because we got work to do in between then and now, okay? <laughs> John eight twenty eight to 30 says, so Jesus said, he's speaking to the Jews that were gathering around him and kind of questioning, who, who are you? What is your purpose here? And Jesus said to them, when you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am he, and that I do nothing on my own, but speak just what the Father has taught me. The one who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, for I always do what pleases him. And even as he spoke, many believed in him. So we're going to focus on speaking what the Father teaches, just like Jesus spoke what the Father taught him. And you know, you know that I love Jesus. And there are so many things to love about Jesus. But that he humbled himself to show to show us how we learn from the Father. Did he need to give the Father credit? No, because he's perfectly in relationship with his Father. But we are not. There's always breaks in it. And Jesus modeled for us that we're going to speak what the Father teaches. So today... If you're wondering, how are we going to do that, Julie? If you're wondering, I don't even know if I can hear God speak and I'm supposed to speak what he teaches, we're going to cover lots of ground today. But the Lord put this all in his Bible for us. He's so good like that. And one thing he showed me while I was praying and preparing was this. You don't have to raise your hand because I know there are many of you in this room who have either played sports or watched children or grandchildren play sports. And some of you spent many an hours watching the clothes from those stinky long practices. It is practice is part of sports. Sometimes practice takes up a whole big amount of time beyond what one game is. So, can I ponder a moment and ask 
why we as believers think that when we read a command in the Bible, we should know how to do it right away. When somebody knows we're struggling and gives us that scripture, why do we think we have to put it into practice immediately and then beat ourselves up when we can't continue it? Spiritual things need practice. Jesus is talking about big things, listening to what the Father is saying, speaking what the Father teaches, lifting him up and exalting him in daily life. He's talking about hard things. So today we are going to understand that we are disciples of Jesus Christ and we are in training. We are in training, and training requires practice. Nobody comes out of the womb knowing how to discern God's voice. Nobody comes out of the womb knowing how to read his word. So, discernment is a fancy word for knowing the difference between God's voice and our own. Knowing the difference between the devil's lies and God's truth knowing the difference between God's will for our lives and our own will for our lives. Before I knew what this word meant, God was teaching me to discern between the devil's lies and the truth. And I've been here before speaking about that. That is important. That is important. And if I may remind us and encourage us, We are in the end times. We are in the end times. There is an urgency to understand the truth versus the devil's lies. No, I don't know when Jesus is coming back. Only God does. But what I do know is his Bible says there will be all kinds of teachers twisting the words, trying to get you to go astray. So I want to see you all in heaven. I want you to know the truth. I want you to be able to hear God when he's speaking because he will not direct you in a wrong direction. It is the perfect direction for you every single time. First, We need to believe that God speaks to us. And some of you may say, I Julie, I just I get it, but I don't hear from God. Anybody, anybody who's doubting that in this room can pick up a Bible and it holds 66 books of God speaking to you. Hebrews says his word is a double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow, judging thoughts and attitudes of the heart. It speaks into your life just as it speaks into mine because they're not just words on the page. And John 8.47 says, Whoever belongs to God hears what God says. If you consider yourself belonging to God, then you have the ability to hear what God says in his word through others. And of course, in John 10, he tells us we're his sheep. And you know how many times I've stood up here just this morning, I noticed Jesus carrying that sheep back there, and we are his sheep. And he says, His sheep hear his voice. And above all the world and its noise, we need to know his voice. So how do we come to know God's ways intimately enough to discern between his will and our own? 
how did I finally get to the point where I was like, okay, I guess God is telling me to be a pastor? Because it wasn't my thought. It wasn't my will for my life. But we have to test things that come our way. First Thessalonians says you have to test it. Hold fast to what is good, but you have to test it. So nothing against Pastor Charlie, but I had to test it. And then somebody else said it at a retreat, and I thought, huh, that's two. Huh. And then that um, verse in Isaiah where he says, send me, Lord, send me, leapt out as I was reading scripture. I have said, send me, since he has saved me. And why should I get to pick where he sends me? So we do test it. We do make sure it's God who's giving us the thought. We make sure it's God whispering into our ear and not the devil. And remember, this is practice. We need to keep practicing. Keep practicing. If you get a thought that's not your own, stop and ask yourself, where did this come from? Some of you may remember the story of the chicken salad for Blessed Maureen Hench. I'm telling you, I'm at the Giant, the New Cumberland Giant, and my guys like meat, ham, Genoa. I have never bought chicken salad at the Giant New Cumberland. But I kept getting this thought about the dang chicken salad. And I'm like, I don't, I don't need chicken salad. It's not, on, it's not on my list. And then God, because he knows I'm visual, shows me Maureen's face. So for me, I mean, would the devil have wanted me to get chicken salad? Maybe the devil would have wanted me to add to my bill. I don't know. But I needed to know that it was for somebody or I wasn't going to buy it. And there was Maureen's face. And if I remember that time... It was the best chicken salad Maureen had ever had. So it wasn't my will. I didn't go into the store with something to buy something for Maureen. But God, our sovereign God, said, I'm going to speak to Julie, and she better listen, because I want to bless Maureen today. Whew. So remember I said we've got lots of work to do. So I'm going to slow down a minute. And I'm going to read you Proverbs 9, 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. The fear of the Lord of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, the beginning of that ability to discern what is God and what is not. Do you fear God? Do you have reverent fear for our Creator our giver and taker of life, our fullness of truth and grace, wrath and mercy. Do you have a reverent fear of him? And if the answer is yes, then you are at a good place to start training for that discernment. If the answer is, I don't really get that, Julie, well, that's good. Because God will help you get that. And God will give you an appointment with me or somebody else to help you understand that. God's not going to leave you in the dark about that. Proverbs, that proverb also says, knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. 
This is understanding that does not come from school. This is understanding that does not come from your parents. Knowledge of the Holy One. Do you know him? And that is not an intellectual question. And if you, the answer is yes, then again, you're in a good place to start practicing that training of discernment. If the answer is, I don't know what you mean by that, Julie, then good, because our God will help you know what that means. Have you asked God to speak to you? Have you asked him to give you discernment? Especially in times of confusion, being overwhelmed, if somebody speaks into your life and you're going, should I accept this wisdom? Should I accept this advice? Have you asked the Lord to give you discernment? 1 Kings 3, 9 to 10, King Solomon was an itty-bitty king. He was young after his King David uh, died, I believe. And King Solomon said to the Lord, I, I, need to, I need help. I need to know what is right from wrong. And verse 10 in that passage in 1 Kings says, the Lord was pleased that Solomon asked him. So if the Lord is pleased that Solomon asked him for help to know the difference between his will and not, to between right and wrong, truth from lies, then isn't he... Okay. <laughs> Isn't he going to be pleased when you ask him to help you with discernment? And that is an area that we can always grow in. We're never going to get to be the best discerner around. Even Olympic gold medalists continue to practice that same skill that they won the medal for. Hebrews 5.14 says, But solid food is for the mature, who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish between good and evil. Well, there it is. His confirmation that we're in training. Not Julie's words, his words that we're in training. Constant use. Constant training. And if you are a believer in the end times, then you are a target for the devil. We're always a target for the devil, but there is an upbeat evil going on in this country. And just because we don't live in a high violence area doesn't mean the devil's not going to want to get between you and God. Constant use, constant training between good and evil. There's really no in-between. The Lord continues to give me opportunities to speak into women's lives, women who, some one-on-one, -on -one, some I spoke to a group this past week, who make mistakes, get stuck in their failures, and continue to point fingers at themselves, not seeing, not realizing, that that is the work of the devil. So then I get to use some discernment in how I then point them back to our Jesus who does not point fingers at them, but rather opens his hands and says, come, come child. There is no condemnation when you are in me. We never know how God will use the discernment that we have. There are times, okay, let me pause a minute. There are times when 
There are lots of times when we're together worshiping and we're talking about sharing the good news, being his hands and feet, and we get excited sometimes to go out and share the good news, especially when God has done something good in our lives and we're like, whoo, he's always good, recently good in our lives, and we want to share it. And there's lots of people that need to hear the good news. There's no doubt about it. But I pray, I pray as you go forth in training, in your discernment, that you will listen to our sovereign God before you share the good news. Why, Julie? Why? Isn't it good to share the good news? Some years ago, I was at a restaurant with my cousin, and (laughs) I was hippy skippy happy about what Jesus was doing in my life, and Jesus was ready to leap off my tongue with this young hostess and her young waiter. I don't know if they were together, but that's not the point of the story. They were um, artists, and they were showing us their drawings, and we had this rather, the, the conversation got rather heavy. We were talking about all the hard things that kids go through, bullying, you know, some who are abused. And somebody mentioned darkness. One of them mentioned darkness. And I was right there ready to scream about the light of the world we just heard about through Becky's prayer. And the Lord said, nope. That's not your job, Julie. That's not your job to tell them about Jesus today. What you're going to say is, you you cannot know the light until you go through the darkness. So I said it, and these people acted like that was a huge revelation. And afterwards, I was so confused, I had to really pray, Lord, why didn't you want me to share Jesus? Well, we know God doesn't have any responsibility to answer our why questions. But what I do know and what I do trust is that our God wants them to be saved, they're not. But I was not the chosen vessel. So let us not assume that we are the ones just because we know the truth Let us not assume that we are the ones just because we can discern what's going on in someone's life that we're supposed to speak it. Our sovereign God knows that person, whether it's your wife, your husband, your child, your grandchild, better than you. Perfectly, in fact. And if it's a stranger, he knows their life in whole. You do not. Our job is to obey. Our job is to lay down our will time and time again so that we can follow his. And those of you who have trouble discerning what is the will of God for my life, my question to you would be, have you surrendered? Have you prayed for direction? And how long have you prayed for direction? I'm going to read the scripture again that we started with. I promised I would do that, and here we are. And we're going to focus on John 8:28. That says, so Jesus said, when you have lifted up the Son of Man, when you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am he and that I do nothing on my own, but speak just what the Father has taught me. The one who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, for I always do what pleases him. And even as he spoke, many believed in him. It's at this time, if you are able to stand, I would like you to stand and repeat after me.
I'll go line by line. I won't get too far ahead of you. So this is based on that scripture, changed for our purposes. When I have lifted up the Son of Man, then I will know that he is Jesus, that I do nothing on my own, but speak what the Father has taught me. Jesus sent me into the world, and he is with me. He has not left me alone. I want to do what pleases him. Dear Heavenly Father, We're in awe of your knowledge. We're in awe, and we pray that if we don't have the fear of you, that you will give it to us, Lord, in a good way. Lord, I pray over all of these people. These are your people. These are your servants. These are your children, Lord. Collectively, we are seeking you. Collectively, we are asking for discernment, Lord, in today's times, which is getting harder and harder. Help us to listen. Help us to fine-tune our ears to your voice and ignore the rest. Help us to know, Father, what to do in your will, not our own. Help us, help us exalt your name as we serve you, as we see that you're answering prayers, even when you don't help us exalt you. In Jesus' holy name we pray, amen.
So just as we sang, we are, we are children of God, and we have the light of Jesus within us. So I encourage you to take his light and shine it brightly wherever spirit leads you this week. Amen, and have a groovy week.